Joining me in studio today is the lovely Josh Ryan. There's that word again. In, uh, in, in quite an exciting weekend and uh, week of sports around the border city, uh, kicking it off with the Lloydminster Bobcats and a little bit of a, or maybe I shouldn't say a little bit, a lot of an upset there in the AJHL. Yeah, it's probably fair to say this is the highlight of the Junior Ace team season so far. Uh, they've obviously been sitting at the bottom of the North Division standings, but winning 4-3 against a team in the Brook Bandits who essentially have dominated the AJHL, certainly the South Division, but the AJHL as a whole for the past four or five years, still sitting first in the South this season. And uh, to come away with a win like that 4-3, you saw a lot, both an improvement on the offensive end. Uh, they've been getting great goaltending all season, and they were just a little stronger defensively than they've been in recent weeks as well. All around, just a huge win for the team, even though it was followed by a loss against Okotoks. That at least should give the players some signs of we can compete against top teams when we put everything together. For sure, and even in that loss to Okotoks, it was still a well-fought game. There, uh, there was a 5-3 loss, but a good 5-3 loss, if that makes sense. There's lots of points that they, they can build on, and especially Okotoks not too far behind. They're in third place overall in the AJHL, second in the South. So it's not like, you know, it's some schlub team that you know, they, it's, it should be a win. And it, that win against Brooks just blows my mind, honestly. And you mentioned a couple, couple key performances from Tanner Max scoring the hat trick and uh, from Cameron Coyne getting three assists. Just really, really starting to pick up the offense from the depth lines there. So. And certainly, that's probably Tanner Mack's uh, highlight as a player in his AJHL time as well, that hat-trick performance. Um, more known, known more for his grit, I think, than his goal scoring, but he has a bit of an offensive touch. Showed it to you then. Uh, all around a win, despite uh, one injury, of course, that uh, could set them back a little bit. For sure, and it's a defenseman that they just acquired from Okotoks. Unfortunately, injured in the Okotoks loss there early on in the game. So even just the Bobcats having to rotate five defensemen and trying to keep that rhythm in a game that they're hoping to win. You know, they were staying in it. It was a 1-1 game for a while. So for them to just battle through that, uh, that's huge for the team and big steps moving forward. Absolutely. And another big uh, weekend for the community of Hillmont because they also enjoyed a lot of hockey, uh, specifically Saturday, Sunday, Hockey Day and Sask festivities took place. I was along with an alumni game, a banquet, and a couple of NHLers present. For sure. It's, it's great for, for the hockey and the community just to get people involved and to see players like Wade Redden, like Marty McSorley, you know, two people very household names, especially McSorley with the Oilers winning two cups. And I mean, Wade Redden being from Hillmont and the rink being named after him. It's just huge for the community and getting people involved within hockey there. Absolutely. They actually really need the money that will be raised from this weekend. They need to replace boards that have essentially been in Hillmont for a couple of decades now. So that's a massive upgrade to that arena, which was filled basically throughout the weekend. So good signs all around for um, the community moving forward for hockey both on and off the ice. Yeah, good signs for Hillmont. Unfortunately, there weren't some great signs for the Lakeland Rustlers as, you know, teams had their ups and their downs throughout this weekend. Yeah, bad basketball weekend specifically. Uh, women's basketball, a big matchup to start off the semester against the Keanu Huskies. The team tied with them at a 10-2 record. They unfortunately are swept. Uh, two heartbreaking losses there and the men specifically a heart, heartbreaking loss on the Saturday they now have a, a very big matchup coming up against Nate. Yeah and in, in this matchup what are a couple keys for this team to uh, find success I guess? The main thing is simply to stay out of foul trouble obviously but uh, this the real issue they've had in my mind is they haven't been able to get a lot of flow going offensively where they move the ball and get guys open looks rather than guys trying to create offense by themselves. They have some talented players no doubt but until they can get more easy looks for guys especially from the three-point line uh, they're gonna run into some trouble. This Nate team sits one win ahead of them for that race for the final playoff spot. So it's a very critical weekend against the Ukes. Now let's throw it back over to the women's side. Josh, uh, in their matchup earlier in the season between Keanu and Lakeland, 
uh, Lakeland walked away with both wins. What changed between those two matchups? Honestly, the playing out on the road is a big difference between playing at home when you have a team that closely matched with you and that team that physical. So sometimes the officiating comes into play, the energy from the building comes into play. The biggest thing I think on the Lakeland side was they were a little rusty. They didn't have a lot of exhibition play coming into it, so their offense, it really showed up there. They still were fairly strong defensively, uh, keeping the Huskies to under 60 points a game. But uh, if you don't have a lot of flow with your offense, that's, you're always going to run into trouble against a big physical team like Keanu. And uh, just talking to a couple of the players and the head coach, Chris King, they definitely felt like they left something in on the table there for that game. Uh, there's still a chance, obviously, to catch Keanu by the end of the season because they hold the tiebreaker on them from winning twice last semester. But that's going to mean Keanu has to have one or two missteps along the way. Well, I guess we'll see how these wrestlers' teams can bounce back heading into this weekend.